Meet Dexter, meet Christina, say hello you two, it's them, they are side boob, who's the dudes? Hello. Hello Gaffner. How are you? I saw an interesting tweet actually from Conan O'Brien the other day and he just said, who is Gaffner and why is everyone saying hello to him? Ginger bastard. That bastard. Hello, this is Side Boob and the Dude. Apparently British hour. Yes. I don't know if that'll continue. Probably not. No, I would imagine this is getting quite annoying. Probably. I mean, we do it anyway, but... Yeah. Anyway. All right. Fuck your cup of tea, then. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, fuck your cup of tea right up the tea. Oh, happy thanks, goddamn fucking giving to everyone around. Yeah, holiday season. Jesus Christ. I actually thoroughly enjoyed my uh, Thanksgiving weekend because it was just like every other weekend for me. It was fantastic. You didn't go home. I didn't go anywhere. You didn't eat 500 Thanksgiving dinners. Nope, not a single turkey w- entered my mouth. There wasn't your aunt squeezing your cheeks, kissing you, telling you how grown up you are. Nope, You're none like, of that. Well, I'm kind of an adult by now, but yep. thanks, auntie. Yep. Yeah, I did. I avoided it all. It was fantastic. Yeah. You, on the other hand, nope, not so much. No, I mean, I kind of lucked out this year mm-hmm. because my mother didn't cook the full meal. She was only on turkey duty this year. She scaled it down. So, <laughs> this is my mom, and I'm sure many of you have this mother. Every year, she decides to take on the Thanksgiving, the Christmas, any major holiday where you have to cook a lot of food. Oh yeah. My mother is no chef by any means. God love her. Yeah. But. She, one, hates cooking, never does it normally. Like, she's she lives by herself. She just goes to the superstore and gets those, like, homemade salads and eats them. Yeah, the meal in a box. Right. She doesn't give a shit about this kind of thing. But for every reason, every single year, she takes it upon herself to make this extravagant meal that stresses her and me out. Why? I, I don't know. Just because she's been doing it this long? I guess. Is it just, like, she's stuck in some weird holiday limbo where she has to just keep cooking? I think so, yeah. That's unfortunate. And it is it is unfortunate because I'm hungover. Yeah. I go home and do the at-home partying. And well, then, yeah, you have to you have to party with the, the homies, yeah, literally. right. Exactly. Well, homies has never been more literal than it was in that <laughs> sentence. And then I get the like 9 a.m. wake-up call of mashing potatoes. Oh, God, no. And getting screamed at for not mashing the potatoes properly. How else do you mash potatoes? How you do you do that mash wrong? Mash them. You just make it not its original shape. Mashed accomplished. Yeah, some milk, butter, suck it. Potato. Oh, man. <sighs> 9 a.m. you started mashing potatoes? What time was it? Did you have like a lunch or was it straight up dinner? No, you don't eat on thing. You can't eat. Well, no, it. I mean, like, did you have, like, a Thanksgiving lunch, or was it... Uh, we usually do around, like, 4 o'clock. Oh, okay. Yeah, one of those. But... That's still really early to start mashing potatoes, 9 a.m. Like, honestly, I would just, like, go down the street to, like, some pub that makes turkey dinners anyway, and <laughs> yeah. just buy a bunch of them, just and be like, <laughs> I'm amazing. Excuse like... me, can I get pre-mashed potatoes from yeah. you guys? <laughs> turkey, gravy, all of it, just... Pack her in those things, and I'll unpack it and put it in pots, and then everyone will have a great Thanksgiving. <laughs> hey, hang on here. You're putting it in pots? Yeah, to you're, make it look legit. You're planting these, like, meals? Yeah, All so right. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to buy made meals already okay, for yeah. Thanksgiving. Then I'm going to put them in pots and put them on the stove, invite all of the family oh, okay. relatives See, over. See, for whatever reason, I was thinking, like, planting pots. Oh, and I was no. like, do you mean plates? Cooking pots. <laughs> you fool. How high are you? I'm not at all. <laughs> Wait, if you were high, you would be thinking about food. Yeah, but that would have made sense. Yeah. No, I'm just going to fake it. That's what I'm going to do. That's fair. Filter. Oh, that's completely understandable. I don't understand why more people don't do that. My grandmother actually one year um, decided to bring a bucket of KFC over for, I think it was like, I think it was Christmas dinner. And it was just like, thank you, grandma. Yes. You did this properly. Best grandmother ever. Oh, I know. And like, I'm just not a big turkey person. No, well, I... Am, but at the same time, I'm only eating it because it's what I'm supposed to be eating. Right. So I guess I'm not really a big turkey person. See, like, I'm I'm down with the ham. I mm-hmm. like the ham. Actually, this year, so as I was saying, like, my mom only had to cook the turkey this yeah. year. So she didn't do the whole shebang, so it was okay. And we went over to the neighbors, and then our family, they do a thing together, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I like ham. I'm yep. a big ham person. Yep. I also like this squash casserole that my mom makes, neither of which... We're there this year. So my mom was not thankful for her daughter. She didn't give two shits about me being there. That's unfortunate. You look forward to your favorite things at Thanksgiving and then they're not there. 
Why'd I even go? That's like not having stuffing or cranberry sauce. It's just like, I'm not going if those things aren't there. I should have called up your grandmother and said, KFC this year? Yeah. She would have been oh, like, Oh, she would have been there in a heartbeat. Finger looking good. Let's do it. She would have been there in a heartbeat. <laughs> she would have been like, Oh, I'm on my way. I'm getting the gravy. Awesome. That would have been great. My so, gr- who usually prepares in your family? Um, well, okay. Well, normally for, for Thanksgiving anyway, it's normally my, my father and uh, my uncle that kind of tag team it, I guess. Not even necessarily tag team it. They do basically what your mom did where they like some of them will cook some things and then bring it to it's wherever. the best way to do it. I know, right? It just seems way Pot more luck. efficient. Exactly. Like yeah. a potluck style holiday meal. Right. But my father likes to, every year he does like something different that he likes to try and do with the turkey. Okay. Like he'll just try and mix it up. Like uh, like last year, well not last year, but the last year I was home, um, he, he bacon wrapped the entire turkey. I've been seeing that everywhere this year. Why have I never thought of that? I don't know why that's not that's brilliant. a permanent turkey fixture is bacon. Was it amazing? It was amazing. And it was like he brined it. So like he cooked it in or he uh, let it sit in salt water for like 24 hours before he put this bacon wrap and then glazed it. And it was just like, this is not turkey. This is some sort of magical hybrid. Wow. It was amazing. Absolutely fantastic. But uh, yeah, and my grandmother normally brings like a dessert or a bucket of KFC, depending on the day, I guess. <laughs> Last lady. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My grandmother, she likes to, uh, well, my grandmother prefers to get things that are good and not necessarily things that are going to just look good on a plate. Well, that's the thing about like Thanksgiving, too. It's like, this isn't like exceptional food. Like, no. This isn't like fancy time food on a plate. No. It's like mashed potatoes, cooked carrots, some squash, yep. turkey. Friggin' gravy, yeah. shabam! All the things, and and the whole point too is it's, just, it's supposed to be just sharing all this food. That going back to the old days of like, of of the Europeans coming over and settling and sharing a meal with the Aboriginal people, and it's just like why why are you making this so fancy? And also, in modern time, maybe it's just technically to be thankful for something. Yeah, but really, it's like somebody. Slaves all day in the kitchen. Yep. He's psycho like my mom mm-hmm. at the end of it. Their relatives and friends come over 20 minutes before dinner's served. Yep. Leave 20 minutes after it's done. With There's limited, a- limited gratitude. No, thank you usually at all. No. They usually drink all of your booze, <sighs> eat all your food, <sighs> dirty all your plates, and then they're the F out of there. That's, that's, oh, that's the opposite of what it's supposed to be. It's dreadful is what it is. It is dreadful. Do you know what's also dreadful? The fact that Thanksgiving seems to fall on this weird holiday where people are like, I don't know if it's Sunday or if it's Monday or it's just like, I'll celebrate it whenever it's convenient. And it's just like, how how do you have a holiday where it's just like, have it it's somewhere in these three days? And then someone ends up eating three turkey dinners yeah. in a row with... A bunch of leftovers afterwards, yeah. and you don't literally want to look at turkey again until Christmas. Exactly, and then you have turkey again at Christmas, and you were like, "This is this is exactly why I had to wait this long because now I'm going to do it again and have three full turkey meals." And it's just like, "Oh, can't do it." Oddly I can't enough, do it. this has made me think about making a turkey sandwich. You're hungry now, aren't you? I am. That's not good. Can we take a break? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Christina. Look at that side boob. She's rude. She's lewd. She's side boob. That turn you on? Well, it shouldn't, because that's my side boob. I'm giving thanks for dude. Oh, I'm giving thanks for not only my side boob, it being you, not, you know, the physical side boob that's on my body. Yes. But all side boobs, really, in general. Yeah, I think that's probably for I think the best. that's fair. I mean, you are my favorite of all side boobs. I'll bow my boob to you. Oh, yay. <laughs> um, we are giving thanks for Thanksgiving slash not really. Nah. Eh. We're mostly just bitching about it. Yeah, well, it <laughs> tends to be what we do. <laughs> um, so we already talked about preparing the food, but now... Yeah, everybody's arriving now. Yeah, we got to talk about the family and friends. Oh, coming. the family. Oh, my what God. a weird group of people that family is. Like, everybody has one of every one of these yep. that we're going to talk about. Every single one. So, for whatever reason, whenever there's a family function and food's involved... Mm-hmm. Booze is involved as well. Every time. And they're always like, I like to refer to them as the drunk uncle. Yeah. But they might be your drunk father. Or aunt or cousin. Or someone. There's someone something, and for now, they're the drunk uncle. Yep. That one person who decides to just get loaded mm-hmm. 
at family functions. And every single time, they drive themselves. So someone has to arrange to be their DD. Yeah, take their they, car home. They haven't planned it out. And whoever is having the Thanksgiving dinner then has to get that car back to them the next day. Yep. They eat them out of house and home, and they drink them out of house and home every single time. Yet we keep inviting them back. You have to, because they're your family. I know. You can't pick your family. You can only pick your friends. I think my favorite part about uh, my particular drunk uncle is the fact that he will not accept that he is the drunk uncle, so he tries to get everyone else on his level. Yes. So he's just like walking around, pouring people drinks. Like I Literally, I was home for Christmas last year, and uh, Christmas is like... Christmas is our really big meal. We have it on Boxing Day out at my aunt's house and out in like the boons. Right. And uh, my my uncle just literally wanders around with like a bottle of Crown Royal in his mm-hmm. hand, just topping people off. Oh it's yeah. Just like I wasn't even drinking Crown Royal. You're just pouring it into a cup now. This was like this was a Keith's. It was like I now have beer and Crown Royal. You're like thanks, uncle. I accept this challenge. It's like I'm gonna drink it, obviously, yeah. <laughs> but I don't really want it. Yes, they always want to get you just as drunk as them. Which because then make, it's acceptable. But it doesn't make any sense. Not even again, a little bit. Someone has to be sober at these events. Yes. Someone. Because everyone wants to leave at some point. Oh, and the drunk uncle usually gets there first. Like, oh, yeah. You want everyone Get the head start. El- yeah. like, <laughs> you want everyone else to arrive earlier, but for whatever reason, obviously to drink more, yep. he arrives first, and so you're like rushing to get things done. Like, yep. you know, mashing your potatoes, putting butter in this, and salting that, and checking the turkey. And he's just like... So anyway, this guy at my work the other day, blah, yep. blah, blah. Meanwhile, he's halfway through a bottle of wine already. Yeah. You got to watch him with the little kids because he's trying to play with them, but he's like stumbling over He's well. kind of stepping on them while he's playing with them. He gets creepy when he's like, come on and sit on uncle's lap. Yeah. Like, no, kids, don't do don't it. Don't do it. He's too drunk. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing. Speaking about kids. Yep. The kids table. Oh, the kids table. My permanent residence. I feel like I'm always going to be at the kids table too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, it's weird in my family because I have a bunch of way older cousins than mm-hmm. me and then cousins who are a lot younger than me and no one really around the same, same age. Same. So, I have one cousin that's the same age as me. Everybody else is in this weird gap. Right. So anyone who is now an adult cousin, yeah. like myself, yeah. is married and has kids. Right. I don't fall underneath that umbrella. No. But then the rest of them are literally like... Either talking to their boyfriend on their cell phone because they're like 14 Mm -hmm. or like playing with like Lego in the other room. Oh, that's where I'd be. So that's where I go. I naturally just go with the kids. It's like I'm the babysitter, which is really, really exciting for like my aunts and uncles. Oh, totally. Totally. You're their favorite. Yeah, because they get to like, you know, sit with my crazy uncle. Join the drunk uncle. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But then it's time to eat. And it's like, we've got to figure out where everyone's sitting. And then it's just this awkward, like, no one made a spot for me at the adult table. So, like, I guess I'm going to sit in one of those little plastic chairs. I'm I'm (laughs) going to take the crown out of the Christmas cracker and put it on my head. Should I? Shouldn't I get my old Kool-Aid cup? (laughs) I will. I want my Hercules cup now. And I will find my drunk uncle, and I will make him put booze in that Kool-Aid cup. Yeah, yeah. Can I please get Crown Royal in a sippy cup? I think that would be the greatest holiday meal. That would be amazing. But you've really got to watch where you set that thing down. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> or that could be a new game altogether. Getting babies drunk? Not no, babies. Dexter. Not no. babies. Just nah. No, I probably shouldn't get babies drunk. Although, no, I'm not no, going to no. get babies Don't drunk. Don't do that. It's like kicking cats. It's just like <laughs> it's socially just something acceptable. You're not supposed to do. <laughs> so, kids table, drunk uncle. Yeah. The, the aunt. The aunt wandering around with her head cut off because she's just trying to get everything ready. Yeah, and it's like, it's not even her house and she didn't nope. prepare the meal. Nope. But for whatever reason, she's just this amazing control freak. Yeah. And she's just like, well, you know, you should be putting this here and the, then the wine glasses should go here. And, yep. blah, and then the person who's cooking, which is my mom, wants to kill her. Mm-hmm. Just wants to punch her square in the nose. Well, because it, it gets to a point, too, where she's trying to help so much that she's actually starting to hinder Yes. And just like, you're just like, okay, just go clean something then. Yeah. And she's just like wandering around, yeah. straightening pictures. And it's just like, what are you, you doing? You know when you'll be really useful? When there's a mound of dishes <laughs> to do. When this is all done and you want to start cleaning up, that would be perfect. You just give Go to town. Also, like, when you're around our age, yep. people always want to know what you're doing in your family. Oh, yeah. But they see you twice a year, maybe. Yep. At these family functions, mm-hmm. at Thanksgiving, at Christmas time. And it's like... I really just want to take them all into the living room and sit them down and go, okay. Story time. I'm going to tell you all this once and once only. Yeah. I work here. I don't have a boyfriend. <laughs> Stop asking me. Stop asking me. <laughs> I don't plan to get married anytime soon or have kids. Are we clear? Good. 
Now, the rest of you, don't ask me this again, because you end up repeating yourself the entire time. I think we should develop this sort of system where, like, we get a holiday card. You know how there's those holiday cards and they sing to you when you open them? Yes. It's just got a built-in, this is what I'm up to story. Yeah. And you just start handing it out to people. Yeah, here you go. And just be like, you want to know what I'm up to? Open the card. Literally, all of the females in my in my side of the family that mm-hmm. come to these functions are forever asking me why I'm not married yet. Yeah. Because you're 25? Yes. That should be the reason right there. Christina, you're successful. You're done school. You're a good-looking girl. I don't know why you don't have a man. Maybe I don't want to have a man, okay? Maybe I don't need a man. No. You ever think of that? You definitely don't. Auntie Crazy? Look at you. Look at how strong you are. Those guns over there. I'm just going to tell them all I'm lesbian. Like hey, what? That could, yeah. Yeah. Next that could time, open a whole new barrel of fish right there. Next time I'm actually going to just bring one of my girlfriends and say, you have to pretend to be my lesbian lover oh, this entire time. That sounds like fun. Which leads me to Can I be your point. lesbian lover? You have to shave. Okay. Well, maybe don't shave, actually. I'm going through some stuff. Yeah. That's what I'll say. I'll tell them I like my women manly. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Here we go. I don't like my men, but I like my women manly. Yes. <laughs> Which leads us to another um, section of the family dinner. Yep. The awkward new relationship. Oh, the cousin that brought the boyfriend or girlfriend for the first time for the whole family to meet? Yeah, and they're always sitting or standing together like in an embrace because that person's like nervous about being around a bunch Mm -hmm. of crazy people, and I don't blame them. That they've never met. Yeah, can't blame you because my whole family are nuts. Yep, mine too. It's okay. yeah, Yeah, that's always so strange. And it's like no one ever really wants to go up and talk to them. No. Do you ever find that? Oh, yeah. It's funny, too, because every once in a while you get, like, that one cousin or, like, that one aunt that just every year seems to be bringing somebody else Mm -hmm. to these family dinners. And that's why no one talks to them. No, and then you sit there and you're like, I don't know if I met you last year or if you're new. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Like, were you here last year? It's like, no, we just started dating, like, three months ago. It's like... The it last one was blonde, too, then. Okay. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, it was our other cousin who brought that other girl this time. Yeah. I mean, th- this guy's not, you know, going from girl to girl or anything. No. Uh, he's not bringing in no. all kinds of different girls. And then, like, your other relatives, like, get into the kitchen. Like, the the female relatives yep. always have, like, a nice chat about everyone in the kitchen. Yep. And they'll be like, oh, that Thomas. Look at him again with that slutty-looking thing. <laughs> Could she have wore a shorter skirt to this dinner? This is the family function. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is she doing here? Ah, oh, it's so good. And then all the guys probably get together and smoke their cigar, and they're like, man, look at Thomas's new thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good for him. You can see he's doing well. Yeah, it gives him a high five. Yeah, from the distance. <laughs> she comes out behind him because she's still latched onto his <laughs> With oh, her hand you. in his back pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Like, here I am. <laughs> uh... Yep. So the first, the first time meeting the significant other, uh, it's always awkward, too, because you're like, I don't know if I'm ever going to see you again. Mainly yeah. because I don't see my family that you're here with. Yeah, like, I, this is the first time in two years I've seen my cousin. So, like, congratulations on your two-week relationship. <laughs> yeah. Probably see in two years if you made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you make it another two years, congrats. And uh, I'm going to give you a high five because you've, you've earned it. Yeah. Well, now that we've stuffed ourselves full of family, mm-hmm. I think when we come back, we get to the partying aspect of being home. Over the best the part of all. Yeah. We'll do that. Okay. Dexter. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? Uh, he loves his food and is always in a good mood. It's the dude. That or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing. Party party with side boob and the dude. You can't go home without partying. No. You can't. It's frowned upon. No. Because if you go home and you just see your family, your friends hate you. Yes. They, they know you're home. hate you. Yeah. And you know what's funny? When you go home, yeah. there's still landlines there. Oh, yeah. So even if oh, you don't yeah. pick up your cell phone. They know, they know your family's They will call your number. mom's house. They know it. They'll do it's it. It's in their phone. And this yeah. is why they never took it out. Yeah. Because they were like, mm-hmm, it's going to come in the handy one day. The phone will ring. Your mom will pick it up. And she'll be like, Christina, Joshua's on the phone. You're like, no, mom. Fuck, Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm not here. Mom. Why? Yeah. Ah. yeah. Literally, last time I went home for Christmas, my mother was supposed to pick me up at the uh, like the shuttle drop-off site, which is oddly a Burger King. Okay. But um, it was it was ridiculous because I was like, okay, mom, sending you a text. I'm gonna be there in like 20 minutes. Right. That gives you enough time to get up from your desk, whatever you're doing, and leave and come get me. Mm-hmm. So I sent her this text. 
and I, I get there, and not a solid, like, 30 seconds, I'm out of that shuttle, and four of my friends come over, and they were like, we heard you were coming home today. And I was just like, from who? Your friends like, sound really creepy. You just be like, from your mom. And it was just like, mm. oh, it, uh, she told you that I, what? I was like, I didn't tell anybody I was coming home. And she was like, yeah, we're, we're here to abduct you. And then they just took me. And I t- sent my mom a text. I was like, I, psh, uh, I don't know if you already left, but I'm not there anymore. And yeah. she was like, no, I sent them. I was just like, mom. <laughs> this is a brilliant point because we're both from small towns. Yeah. We're both from small places. So like. You leave your small town and like not everybody knows your business when you're in a bigger city. Nope. It's it's much better. You can return to your small town. Yep. And again, 15 of your friends know when you're arriving and where you'll be to abduct yep. you. What time you're going to be there, how long you're in. It's so bizarre and it's so strange. And you can't go anywhere in no, your small town. Not at all. Without running into a million people you didn't want to see. And not even necessarily people you didn't want to see, just people you weren't expecting to see. Yeah. You're not ready to see. Yeah. For whatever reason. Like, you'll see your best friend, an old teacher, yep. a cousin of yours, and the guy who lived down the street, yep. all at the same grocery store within five minutes of each other. They're all just hanging out together. I have this theory, too, when you go back to your small town, where even if you need to go across the street to the quick way, mm-hmm. and all you're doing is picking up milk, you must prepare yourself for this venture. Oh, because yeah. Because if you do not want to run into your ex-boyfriend or girlfriend, it's likely that at that point, when you think you have a five-minute window for no one to ever see you will be the time in a small town that those people see you. Yep. So you better get your boobs out and put some lipstick on <laughs> yep. before you go across the street to get that milk. I don't, leave, I don't leave the house unless I've got my lipstick on and my boobs out. Well, I figured as much with you. Uh, <laughs> I can't. People don't recognize me. No. Yeah, that's true. You're but me. you're right. You're 100% right. Every time that you don't want to see somebody, you're going to. You will, yeah. So you got you to gotta go to the nines yeah. to get ready before you can wander out. And this happens, too, when you go home and you party for a holiday too mm-hmm. because it's the you can anyone and everyone goes out and parties at this point like, yep. it's not just the like 18 year olds 19 year olds in your hometown it's literally everyone will be at any bar that you go to everyone that's sick of being with their family yeah. is now out at the bar this happened to me when I was home and <laughs> people come up to me and they're like Christina like how are we man like blah, blah, blah. and I'm like what the fuck is your name <laughs> like, yep. just come to me at this drunken moment please brain figure it out like who are you and I just I can't can't I forget it. them like, you know the face you have no sweet clue what the name is no I, I just want to be like you know what I'm just really bad at remembering people's names in general yeah. like, it's not just you <laughs> it's not you it is me it, it, it is me in this case this every other mind. time that gets said to you it's a lie but in this case it's not you yeah it is me and remember I was talking about last week that I just usually write people's names as something random in my that's phone true. anyway so one way to remember someone is totally screwed for me because I've already nicknamed you. I've nicknamed you something. Mm-hmm. And now I'm fucked. I'm in a very lucky uh, position where I'm just really, like, overly friendly with everybody. So I go with a lot of, like, buddy and man and dude and bro. You've prepared so yourself I, to never remember I, Exactly. Name. I'm I'm Like, people are now expecting it from me, so it's not weird if I go there. Yeah. I love, too, when I'm with a friend who hasn't met this person, then I can't remember their name. Ye- oh, and yeah. And then I'm like, listen, when we go back there, introduce yourself so that they'll introduce themselves to you, and then we'll all be in the clear here. If we will all know each other's names, we will it'll know. be glorious great great game to that play. is a great tactic i actually use that with uh my buddy barrett he um he's just he's just good for following my lead and he's just he just knows if i have no sweet clue who somebody is he's just like hey i'm barrett and yeah. they're like oh hey i'm so and so and it's just like oh thank you well, my friends are drunk so i have to <laughs> them in the right yours direction are significantly less helpful than yes, mine that's absolutely. for sure oh and too when we're home like we go out to this fucking grungy old bar from my hometown and I get so drunk. Like, why? Like, we just get drunk like we were in high school. Well, you're in your natural habitat now. Right? And it's we just feed off of each other. Like, two, like $100 was gone in two hours. That's like, ridiculous. Just over. Like, That's ridiculous. Bam. I didn't need to do that. Not even a little bit. Those shots did not need to. Well, yeah. They, well. They did. They needed yeah. to happen to, you know, kind of obliterate whatever else had been going on all weekend. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> I'm still hungover, I think. Yeah. Oh, I can guarantee you are. Fuck. Oh, well. Let's talk about something else when okay. we come back. Your dad has nothing on this. Well, I can't count the reasons I should stay. It's shit my roommate did. One by one, they all just fade away. Side boob and so do. 
food! Shit my roommates did. Yeah. Or do. <laughs> because sometimes it's just a continuation of things that have already been done. Or continue yeah. over and over again. Because my roommates, I love them to death. They're fantastic human beings, like wouldn't trade them for the world. But oh my god, they are the strangest group of people. Yeah, they are. I'd like just the weirdest, weirdest people. Anyway, I came home the other day after we had just reorganized our entire living room. Like we tore it apart and just completely redid it. Like feng shui went out the window <laughs> and then came right back in and it was like, this right. is better. So anyway, we rearranged our living room and literally the next day I come home and it's just full of everything. Like everything that we own is in the living room. And What's I'm just the like, point? I was just like, what are you guys doing? Why redo the living room to just pack it full of shit? I was like, what are you guys doing? And they were like, we're rearranging rooms. I was like, you're what? They're like, yeah, we decided to trade rooms. I was like, why? And they were just like, I How don't know. We rearranged the, li- we've been there a little over a year. I like room swapping, though, now that I think about it. That well, was kind of fun. I, like, yeah, but I mean, they just did it on a whim. They were just like, yeah, let's change rooms. And it was just like, that sounds like a great idea. Let's do it immediately. <laughs> yeah, let's do it right now. Because I got a text before I came home, and it just said, what time are you coming home? And I was just like... Were you expect expected to help them? Yeah, I was like, I don't know. I'll be home in like two hours. And then I never got a reply, and I didn't really think much of it. So I get home. Living room's full. Of everything that we ever owned. And it was just like stuff from the kitchen, too. I was like, why is this out here? We're not moving the kitchen. We can't. It's it's a set room. We cannot rearrange the kitchen. Except that would be amazing if someone decided to make the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, ah. like, I live in the kitchen now. Oh, that would suck. I'd be that like, all right, suck. yeah, okay. But anyway, um, I was, I, I, don't, I don't know if I was expected to help, but as soon as I walked in, I was put to work. Absolutely. So it was just like, this is the worst thing you guys could have done to me today yeah like i just finished work oh yeah like i come home and it's just like well can't sit because that's just full of stuff Uh. but then i thought maybe i can escape to my bedroom no 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 no. they'd put things in my bedroom oh yeah i open the door the door opens just wide enough to a dresser there was space there and it was just like i can't even get in my room because this dresser's here it's strategically placed so that i can't pass it yeah I was just like, you guys suck, but well played. So yeah. I'm going to help you because yeah. you just completely blew out my only really other opportunity. It's like, that yeah. was genius. Yeah. You've earned my help now. Oh, man. It was like I went home one weekend and my roommate had just tore our complete living room apart yeah. and had been taping it off to paint it because we had been talking about painting the living room for mm-hmm. a really long time. And then she planned it out perfectly for when I would come home from a weekend and had an entire night of nothing to do, which I was really going to use to like veg out hard. And watch totally. Movies. Recover. Right. But no, no. It was like, so we've been talking about doing this. Like I thought I would just start it. And like, she's got half of it taped off. Like you can't just be like, yeah, I don't feel like it. <laughs> yeah. Like, you got this. Yeah. We've only been talking about painting the living room for the last six months. Like you're good. You're yeah. good. Yeah. Go to town. Right. I'll see you when you're done. It's like, fuck. But then it was sweet when it was done. Does it look bomb now? Yeah, it looks awesome. Oh, well, so then much better. Mission accomplished, I, I guess. Know, right? Fucking roommates. Ugh. God. What would we do without them, though? Really? Not move shit ever. I guess. Or And dust. pay significantly more rent. Or, That's what we'd do without them. Or do my dishes. Yeah. Oh, I love my roommates for the dishes. They are fantastic. Well, one of them is fantastic for that. The other, not so much. That's the way it always goes. Yeah. That's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jim Carrey. Oh, scandalous! It's Dude's Nudes! Okay, so Dude's Nudes, basically what Dude's Nudes is, is um, I'm going to take people in the tabloids uh, that have been caught naked, Mm -hmm. and we're going to make fun of them a little bit. Okay. Um, And then I have some follow-up questions to go along with this. But the obvious first Dude's Nudes have to be the Royals. Okay, yeah. Both Harry and... Uh, Kate. They just love to get naked. Now, Harry actually got naked and was, you know, aware of these pictures being Pantsed taken. Pantsed himself. Yeah. <laughs> Holding his, you know, his royal wee, I guess we could call it. Um, so, Harry did it to himself. King Schlong. King. <laughs> He's the real Burger King. Um, Kate, Kate got photographed on private property. Yeah. From a distance. Was unaware of it. She doesn't deserve to get made fun of as much as Harry, but at the same time, the amount of people that got super excited for Kate 
Milton's naked pictures mm-hmm. and then were incredibly disappointed when they saw them. That's just funny as hell to me. Why were they disappointed? Because she's got really small boobies, apparently. Well, I think you could tell that by looking at her with clothes you on. You would think, but, you know, people aren't that clever. And listen, she can be part of the itty bitty titty committee, all right? Just like me. <laughs> It don't matter. Every time you say that, it makes me laugh. Like, if you got a bit of a handful, you're fine. Yeah, that's all you need. I respect her more for not getting a boob job. Perfect. All right, so there we go. You okay. bastards. Now, here, here are Dude's News follow-up questions. Okay. Who, of anybody, really, would you not want to see ever caught naked in the tabloids? Maybe maybe Michael Moore. <laughs> oh, God. Just because, the, like, the... The sight of it kind of just grosses me out, but also, like, what if he was, like, running? I mean, that would be really funny. Okay, first of all, why would Michael Moore ever be running? I don't know, because he's naked in public. <laughs> yeah, he's, like, he's looking for his get, clothes. <laughs> he's like, no, tablets, don't make a documentary out of my naked body. <laughs> Sell it, and then give me some of the proceeds. Um <laughs> These ridiculous scenarios. Okay. See, I was th- we're kind of on the same one. I was thinking John Goodman. Okay. Would not want to see John Goodman naked. Yeah, maybe. I just feel like that would be just a whole lot of John Goodman Yeah, that I do not want to see. Okay, the flip side of this, who would you love to see get caught naked in the tabloids? Either because you want to see him naked or just because you want to see their life go through some turmoil and get naked. No, if I have that card to play, it's because I want to see them naked. Okay, good. I'm glad. Um, the dude from Criminal Minds, he was also in Which one? The Young and the Restless. Is he the super serious guy? No, 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 no. Um... Hold on, I'm going to I'm gonna Google him. Google it. Okay, well, while you're doing that, I'm going to tell you who I would love to see. Emma Watson. Yeah? Is the one I would love to see in the tabloids. I'm in pretty the sure buff. I saw like a side boob of her. Oh, and you didn't Shamar share? Moore. Who is it? Shamar Moore. Oh, okay. That dude. Yeah. That's fair. He is tasty. He looks like he's tasty. Yeah. I don't know. I've, I've never tasted him, but... I'd take some bites. You'd take some bites? Some yeah. bits and bites? I'd look Hello. up real close to that. Good. All of that. <laughs> that's that's going to be the new desktop image yeah. on Sideboot's computer. His junk, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just a close-up of the junk. <laughs> All right, well, perfect. There we go. Dude's nudes. Emma Watson, though, like, hold on. Side note. Okay, let's go Side back boob. here. Okay. Um, Side boob note. Is it weird that you've known her since she was just like a kid, though? Uh, see, that was that's kind of. I mean, you were a kid too. See, exactly. Emma yeah. Watson and I literally are one year apart to the day. Yeah, we have the same birthday. So, like, you could have like had crushes on her then, and it was fine because you were the same. Exactly. Like, like same I, it's it's like it's it's kind of like having a crush on somebody that you went to elementary school with. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just like I grew up with them. It You're doesn't like, really. I was running around the playground, snapping their training bra. Like what exactly, up? exactly. Yeah. That's that's happened many a time. Pulling on pigtails, snapping training bras. That is. <laughs> People don't forget. All right, those are permanent scars, are they? I developed early. Okay, it wasn't my fault. I was really tall. You developed early and then just stopped. Yes. That's unfortunate. Grade five. Grade five. I think I mean, like, my boobs definitely got bigger after that. But it was. Like, I would hope so. I got tall, like. Yeah. And then I stopped growing. In grade five. In grade five, I had to wear a training bra. Wow. Mm-hmm. Good for you. The guys hated it back then because they didn't realize boobs were cool. And then- Oh, that's that's the greatest realization when yeah. you finally figure out that boobs are cool. Grade seven. It's like the fifth day of school, grade yeah. seven. They come up to me in a group. <laughs> in the cafeteria, I'm sitting down. They're like, we just want to apologize and tell you, like, we now understand that boobs are awesome. And I was like, <laughs> and none of you will be seeing these. Aw, yeah. I <laughs> got the cards to play. Yeah, and now I don't even have a training bra. I got a real one now. <laughs> I got a big girl bra. What <laughs> up? Uh, I have to wear the training bra now. <sighs> anyway, dude's nudes. There we go. Dude's side boob. <laughs> dude's side boob, yeah. Yeah. In the training bra. Okay, so every week, normally, we finish with the must-watch. But this week, I think we should do something a little different. You know what I'm going to say? Yeah? We're going to do whatever we want whenever we want to do it. That's true. That's the beauty That's the beauty of not having anyone to tell us that we have to do otherwise. It's side boob and the dude and not you. Hmm. Hmm. What do you think of that? And you know what? Boom. Yeah. Boom to my A cups. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. (laughs) Anyway, so this week we're ending it with what I like to call the 50-year forecast. Yes. Uh, 50-year forecast. 
So the 50 year forecast uh, is where we predict the future. Yes. So in 50 years, this will be true. Okay. Okay. So I've got mine. Right. Um, 50 years from now, on this day, the United States president, first elected 13 year old girl, will pass a law that states that all United States residents must, and this isn't like an option, must own a pony. That is what will happen in 50 years. Does he have a boot on his head? Well, no, it's a 13-year-old girl, girl. but I do like the uh, tie-in there to whatever his name was, Merlin the something, I don't remember. Oh, God, what's his name? I don't know, but he's the greatest, greatest. Did you see his auto-tune the news thing on YouTube? Oh, my God. Joseph Gordon-Levitt made an appearance. Oh, it was fantastic. So this 13-year-old must be the offspring of him somehow. Totally. Yes. We'll add that to it. Okay, good. All right, well, I'll take a weather approach to 50 years news from now. Yeah. In 50 years from now, I'm predicting that you can be in your own hamster bubble. Oh. And you decide what you want the weather to be. So there's different settings in this bubble that you can walk around with. So it being fallout, normally it would be around like 13 degrees. Mm-hmm. Might be rainy, might be sunny, maybe some frost overnight. Yep. If you don't want that, you just go into your big hamster bubble and you're like, bam, middle of summer, bitches. How big is this bubble? Can you fit multiple people in? Sure, a, in like, party bubbles. Oh, It's yes. 50 years from now, you can do whatever the hell you want. I think we should have personal bubbles and party bubbles, just so we can have the option. Well, it's or the personal bubble that can expand into the party bubble, so you don't have to buy two different products. You know what, dude? It's our 50 years, so we can do with it what we want. Yes, that's happening. All right. Side boob and the dude. Bitches.